In this video, we'll delve into the fascinating process of transforming an unguided bomb into a precision-guided smart weapon by integrating a sophisticated guidance system onto its tail. But how exactly does a wingless weapon and lacking propulsion mechanisms manage to navigate to its designated target? To tackle this intriguing question, we'll draw upon the analogy of a skydiving buddy to provide a relatable comparison, aiding in your comprehension of this complex process. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. J dams and glide bombs are usually our base on this Mark 80 series. Let's take a look inside this most common dumb weapon system. At the front is the nose fuse well, all joined by a fuse conduit. Sandwiched in the middle of this rod is the explosive-filled 500-pound warhead, which translates to around 227 kilograms. This channel rod is connected to a tail fuse. Just a reminder, this is an unguided, low-drag, general-purpose bomb, part of the United States Mark 80 series of weapons system. Let's take a look at how this works in a super-simplified animation. This bomb is usually dropped from a bomber or an F-18 fighter jet. When released, it falls just like a normal dumb weapon. As stated, the bomb can be fitted with a nose fuse, a tail fuse, or both simultaneously. Upon hitting the ground, the frontal fuse activates, burning the fuse conduit from the front to the back, thus creating a huge explosion. The alternative option is using the tail fuse FMU-139. This is usually used for delayed action and is set by the pilot. When it hits the target, the weight of the bomb will penetrate the concrete surface of a building, the fuse activates, and the conduit rod which creates the 500-pound explosion after a few seconds as programmed. This can create a lot of damage considering its small $4,000 price tag. Let's delve into the process of upgrading this into a guided weapon. First, the transformation begins by removing the low-drag tail, paving the way for the installation of the guidance section. Within this new configuration, nestled inside the tail, we discover the intricacies of its guidance system. Here, the inertial guidance kit collaborates seamlessly with a military-grade global positioning unit, ensuring precise navigation towards its intended target. Alongside these components, one can find the adapter ring facilitating the attachment of the telemetry antenna, crucial for transmitting data, as well as the encryption key battery safeguarding sensitive information. Venturing deeper into its structure, we encounter the thermal batteries, vital for powering the system, and the composite fins, strategically positioned to aid in directing the missile towards its objective. These fins, meticulously controlled by gears within, maneuver with precision, responding to commands to adjust the trajectory with accuracy. However, the evolution of this weapon doesn't halt here. It can also be added with a laser-guided kit in the front, elevating its intelligence quotient further. To increase the range, they even added wings called the Glide Bombs or JDAM Extended Range or JDAM ER as they called it. The wing kit will triple the range of JDAM from 15 miles to 46 miles, which translates to around 75 kilometers for the same accuracy. Let's take a look at how this JDAM works. Step 1. Target coordinates can be loaded into this aircraft before takeoff and manually altered by the aircrew in flight prior to weapon release. Step 2. When dropped, the JDAM switches to its internal guidance or GPS. In simpler terms, it uses military-grade satellites to pinpoint its exact locations if needed, and provides real all-weather capability since GPS is not affected by rain, clouds, fog, or smoke, and short doesn't miss its target provided if it's stationary. Step 3. Remember those internal batteries and control gears. The inertial guidance clock keeps track of its position and controls the gears of the fins. So when the JDAM is off course, the fins at the back will redirect or reconfigure according to the GPS or inertial guidance clock to maintain its course. But how does it turn when it does not have wings? Let's take, for example, this guy going skydiving for his vacation. Skydivers will use the surface area of their arms, legs, and torso to change the direction and orientation of their body in the air, just as shown in the animation. My point is, if a human can turn using body surface, now imagine having an aerodynamic weapon that weighs around 500 pounds fallen under gravity. A slight deflection on the tail, considering the amount of air pressure, will help it direct to its designated target. The JDAM can also be upgraded to this small diameter bomb called GLSDB, developed by both the American company Boeing in collaboration with Saab from Sweden. Basically, they attached the M26 rocket to this existing GBU-39 and re-engineered the whole GPS and laser guidance kit to glide to its target. 
The missile has a length of 3.91 meters, which translates to 12.8 feet, with a diameter of 241.3 millimeters. It has an overall weight of 272.1 kilograms, which is pretty decent for a re-engineered general-purpose weapon. What is the big deal with this missile? The M26 rocket motor is relatively abundant, and this GBU-39 costs about $40,000 a piece. Comparing with this M31G MLRS missile, it costs a staggering $110,000 a pop. And most importantly, the range of the GLSDB is around 81 miles or 130 kilometers, which is double the range of this M31 missiles that has a range of only 43.5 miles. Interestingly, this was also used by both the HIMARS and this multiple launch rocket system as animated in our recent video. Besides its low cost, it has the ability to fire six missile all at once. And most importantly, it can hit at any angle, giving it a strike capability over the conventional artillery guns. This include the reverse slopes of any mountains, just like the animation shown here. It's 360 degree gives it an edge as it could engage the enemy from every angle. This helps the Marines to engage the oppositions in battle situation, even if they are flanked from the right, left, front, and back. Before we move into the step-by-step -step process of how this works, let's examine the parts of the missile in detail. This is the M26 motor, which was used from the older unguided rocket of the US military and available in abundance. Moving to the midsection is the interstate adapter. At the top is the GBU or guided bomb unit. These are the glide wings, which open up just like this commanding a wingspan of just 1.6 meters, which translate to 5.2 feet. Let us closely examine the parts of the GBU-39. This is the steel penetrating casing or cable cover. Inside it lies this 250 pound unguided bomb, which is possibly the same jig dam warhead. They essentially repurposed this bomb used by the Air Force and re-engineered it to fit inside this casing. This is the arming generator or unit cover. Moving backward is the wing assembly unit. Inside is the fuse well with insensitive munition features. At the rear is the heavily engineered anti-jamming GPS guidance kit. Also a reminder, this missile utilizes both GPS and laser guidance. Just below is the guidance unit housing. This bomb also houses a small mission computer, as shown here. Closer to it lies the thermal battery unit. Lastly, we have the tail unit that aids in stabilizing the missile. Let us examine how this works. Step number one. The HIMARS or MLRS truck receives data from higher commands for the designated target. Step number two. The HIMARS truck will launch the missile. Step number three. After reaching a desirable altitude, the GBU-39 and the bomb would head toward a target, just like they would if they were dropped from a strike aircraft, such as the American F-16 or the Saab Gripen. Step 4. The GBU-39 will then glide through terrain using the anti-jamming GPS or could even be laser-guided to its target. In a simulated battlefield environment, this is how it might work. When an invading enemy is detected, the command and control station spots the convoy on their screen. The truck-based rocket launcher will then open its roof and fire the desired number of missiles. After reaching a suitable altitude, the GBU-39 will separate and deploy its wings. It will glide towards its multiple targets, either through GPS guidance or laser guided provided by a reconnaissance team. In this animation, you can see that the strategy is to destroy the main point of entry to stop the convoy and then proceed the target from the back to the front. We make original 4K 3D animation with this small team of animators. So please support us by subscribing and dropping in a comment for more exclusive engineering animations made just for you guys.